This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Welcome back to the stage of history. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Yeah, 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 yeah. Please stop this disc now. 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 Hello and welcome to DreamPod by the Dreamcast Junkyard. This is episode ninety-seven. I won't mention how close we are to a hundred because I do every time. Damn it, I've done it again. I'm Andrew, and uh, welcome to another episode. Joining me today for episode ninety-seven, we have uh, our usual usual guests, like the kind of like part of the furniture at this point, as in they just won't go away. Can't get rid of them. They just won't fit out the door. It's Lewis. Hello, Lewis. Hello there. Hello. Um... Can't get rid of you. And Mike. <laughs> How you doing? Hello, yes. Um, apparently I'm a cupboard, which is good. Uh, yeah. You kind of need to be. You've got so many games and stuff. You need somewhere. That's also right? true. Yeah, that is that is true. What would Lewis be then if he was furniture? Uh, dressing table. We'll go with that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, I'm intrigued as to why, but I'll ask another time. <laughs> <laughs> I won't ask what I am because I don't think I'd like the answer. Um, Washing machine. Washing machine. (laughs) Washing machine. (laughs) Again, I won't ask why. Joining us this time is a very special guest. You may remember him from all the way back on episode 37 in 2016, which is a bloody long time ago now. Uh, It is uh, the man from Dreamcast Hub, the man who is Dreamcast Hub, is Stephen. How are you doing? Hey, how are you guys? Glad to be on again. Good to have you. Uh, How's everything going? Really good. Cranking out videos, uh, trying to get the website on par and, uh, you know, just trying to keep the content going. Awesome. Good. Fighting the good fight. Always a yeah. good thing. <laughs> it's been super um, busy lately. Yeah. Well, tell us a bit about that. Tell us, um, obviously, for people who maybe you, who didn't hear you all the way back in 2016, uh, give them a bit of an introduction to yourself, what you do and what you've been up to recently. Okay. Um, so basically, I started Dreamcast Hub about five years ago, I want to say. Maybe more, possibly more. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's basically, I've always been really passionate about the Dreamcast. I got myself back into Dreamcast in like 2015 or so, and then just bought absolutely everything I could. And um, yeah, I've just been in love with it ever since and kind of just want to share as much of that uh, passion as possible with people. Very good. Again, fighting the good fight. Yeah. Good thing to do. In good company. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome to have you on. And um, as you'd probably realize, because, again, this will be in the title of the show, so this won't be any surprise to you. We will be talking about uh, games that were left in Japan, never to be released in the West. Uh, This is volume two. Of course, we did a volume one a fair old while ago. What episode number was that? That was like feels like years ago. So it's nice to come back and uh, look at some more games that uh, that never made it to the West, because there are a lot of them for the Dreamcast. And there's a, a lot of good ones that, you know, People just haven't seen. Uh, but before we dive into that, I am just going to ask a very quick question, as we always do. Uh, we were going to go into what we've all been playing, but that would take far too long. So instead, since uh, we happen to be recording on the 14th of October 2021, which is the 22nd anniversary of the Dreamcast launching in Europe, which is pretty cool. It's a long time again. Um, I thought I'd ask a question relating to that. Uh, so my question for the three of you is going to be, uh, if the Dreamcast were to launch today, which game from its library do you think would sell the Dreamcast to the youth? The youth of today, which game would sell it to them? That's Lewis? a good question. I'm going to come to Lewis um, first because I, I, can, I can see, I mean, I can't see him, but I can kind of feel the cogs turning and I want to <laughs> put the pressure on. Yeah, um... I want to be it's probably a bit of a generic answer but I just I feel like Crazy Taxi is just a timeless game although it hurts to say it mainly to change the music maybe have some of that like new kind of like TikTok strain of pop punk (laughs) instead of uh, Offspring and Bad Religion you know some sort of songs about heartbreak or whatever that the kids are listening to um, but yeah, it'd still be a fun game. And um, yeah, it's just one of them games that, you know, I, I think is just quite timeless. It's just 
mad it's fun and it it still looks pretty good actually um mm. like i i because it, it i think it delivers what it's trying to do you know regardless of the way it graphic its graphics look so yeah i think crazy taxi is just you know a sure a sure winner i think yeah i think you're probably right it'd be interesting to see because obviously they, a lot of the stores that are in crazy taxi no longer exist and what oh, they yeah. take them with now like what, what would you have like the apple store uh, <laughs> yeah the apple store um i don't know the gap the gap it's a gap store around mm, we still got one near me yeah i feel like whenever i see a gap it's like closing down like the ones near where i live they're like two of them and they look like they're always perpetually about to close but that's uh that's just high street shops these days i suppose isn't it that's just what yeah, happens so. unfortunately anyway mm. <laughs> moving on <laughs> before you get into a bit of a downer about shops closing um <laughs> steven what uh what game do you think would uh would sell the dreamcast to the youth of today um so it is kind of a difficult question but i i think um either power stone or jet grind radio those would be two really easy ones because you can kind of see them coming out today because of the fact that they're cell shaded they're fast paced there's you know, that uh, colorful nature to them, like a lot of games coming out today. Um, and I think they also kind of have that, you know, you could just pick up and play them. It's not like people would need to play all previous or current versions of it. I I, I really wish they would re-release Power Stone in some regard, because I think it would just sell really well. Yeah. Plus the multiplayer aspect, too. Yeah, if you put it online, it'd be even better, cool. yeah. It's like <laughs> they hate money yeah. on Capcom. <laughs> Oh, it's so true. It's so sad, but yeah, so so very true. All right, Mike, what mm. do you think would sell well? I think a uh, bit of a curveball. I think a uh, record of Ludus War um, because okay. I think it's it's the sort of game which would be quite a quite a highly received indie game at the current time. I'm saying this because I've been addicted to Hades for the last several weeks, um, okay. and so therefore it's the closest thing I can find to it on the Dreamcast. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's it, one of those games where it's underappreciated at the time, I think, possibly. I think now it's the kind of game which people have lots of nostalgia for that sort of game, and it, it plays really well. So, yeah, that's, that's my slightly curveball answer. I, I do agree with Stephen. I think Jet Set Radio would be the uh, the big one. Yeah, yeah. And and one of the ones that you can still play on most modern consoles, really, can't you? you I think it's available on... Well, it's definitely available on the PC and Xbox. Uh, yeah. That's kind of why I was leaning a little bit more towards Power Stone because, you know, we've been starved of it for so long. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> That's very true. It's a surprise that you've, you've you've moved games, Mike, finally. I think the last few episodes you've been playing Valhalla, so you finally moved away to another uh, kind of God-themed game. Yeah. I mean, it's Norse, isn't it? But no. Yeah. No, I'm still playing Valhalla. Um, it's still oh, you are? Okay. Ex- oh, yeah, it's my obsession. I mean, it's a year now, isn't it, really? Um, wow. Literally obsessed by the game still. Um, but yeah, Hades was, uh, I picked up lots of games on the Amazing Switch uh, sale a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and uh, Hades is a game I've seen before, didn't play, and I now think it's one of the greatest games ever made. Supergiant are a fantastic studio, I'm a huge fan mm. of Bastion, so uh, not got around to Hades yet, but everybody tells me I really have to, so now you've said yeah, it, Mike, I great. really need to do it. <laughs> Okay, well, that's that. I mean, the only thing I was going to add as well is um, we're not doing what we've what we've got recently, but I did have to drop in that I do have a GDMU now, which I, nice. I think I've been wanting for forever. Uh, and I finally have one, thanks to Rich from Dreamcast Years, uh, put one in my Dreamcast for me. It's amazing. I've actually managed to pick up games that we've talked about that I've never managed to play. So I think, what was the, the last uh, Left in Japan episode, Mike? You, there was the Battleships type game that you were talking yes. about. A dice uh, awesome, yeah. yeah, so I'm excited to give that a try. So all these amazing games, and I think some of the games that we've got on our list to talk about today, I have mm-hmm. on there. So didn't have time to play them before this, because, you know, work and stuff. But I'm um, <laughs> definitely going to give them a go at some point in the near future. So yeah, very excited. Um, yeah, GDMU I'm, is an amazing investment. Yes, absolutely. I, I feel like I'm in the future. Yeah. <laughs> just dreamcast games at my fingertips so many of them it's crazy i feel like when i was sorting out my gdmu i stumbled upon one of steven's videos <laughs> to oh, yeah. uh, one of your tutorials it was quite helpful um oh nice but yeah very very informative you know it helped me there you go thank so, you for that <laughs> it's uh, come full circle now we're doing a podcast together there you go <laughs> nice. let it out. i do love the dreamcast community just always there's somebody who can help you with basically anything you need which is fantastic so 
it's always good always find mm-hmm. somebody um but all right before we uh before we get too much into gdmu because i could talk about it for a while because it's awesome maybe in another episode i'll talk more about it we do have a bunch of games to chat about uh that never came to the west and they're pretty good by all accounts uh well so I- i'm saying that i've not played any of these but I hear that they're good. So we're going to hear from uh, my three esteemed colleagues as to why they're so good and why people should be playing them, trying them, uh, you know, seeing if they can get them. Get them for your GDMU. Easy, easy peasy. Um, and I'm going to start with, because it's on my list first, Lewis. Hello. Hello. Uh, um, so we're going to go through both of your games first. Right. And your initial choice is one that, has always interested me because it looks so bizarre. Tell me about <laughs> your first choice, Lewis. Um, yeah, so this is a game that's always intrigued me um, because I feel like when I first was looking online for games on the Dreamcast and seeing you know, this possibility of being able to play imports so easily, Roomania number 203 or 203, is one of the ones that like popped up as being quite um, interesting. Unfortunately, it's uh, you know all in Japanese, as are many of the games that, well, all of them that we're going to talk about. And what I mean is, it's more less accessible because it it kind of requires you to read quite a lot if you want to kind of get the story. And I just this is just right up my alley and just what hope one day it will you know find some kind of translation um into english and it's just another bizarre game um just everything about it the premise is bonkers but um i found the uh i just wanted to give some backstory on it actually this game because i found like the the whole backstory behind it quite fascinating when i was researching it for the pod um, so this game was actually designed by um, Tomoko Sasaki, who um, was a music composer at Sega, who'd done um, songs for uh, games such as uh, Rice Star and Knights. So she's obviously quite a, an esteemed composer. And she had never developed a game before. Um, and this was her first game. And it was apparently inspired by at the time she was watching a lot of these like online webcam live feeds of just people i suppose doing day-to-day things like i don't know what they were doing but um you know that is what she was watching and she found the whole concept quite fascinating so she made this game that was like you're kind of like a fly on the wall um well you play as a god who is viewing the apartment of this student who kind of has like a bit of a mediocre life and you, and your job as the god is to basically make his life more meaningful. And I quite liked uh, that I read what I read that it was des- it's described as an an intervention simulator. So um, you basically in the gameplay you you throw ping pong balls at objects to get the the guy in the apartment to prioritize them as tasks. So he has like a queue of things like smoking, watching the TV. And then you'll throw a ping pong ball at something to try and get him to, you know, take that as priority. But if you're a little bit too aggressive, he'll like ignore you. And um, yeah, it's 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 really quite interesting. It's quite 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 um, fascinating seeing a game like this and seeing quite a lot of similarities actually to obviously the later smash hit of The Sims. You know, in the it, it, almost that that gameplay element of like this order in which he does actions, you know, and being able to change them and obviously like trying to, you know, see through his aspirations is quite like the Sims, I suppose. Um, And also just another sort of little fascinating thing is there's actually an idol in the game that's like fictional, but it's, she it's all the music is sung by, um, well, all the music was created by Tomoko, Sasaki so I think she is the idol like she plays the idol that he like really likes this kid in the in his you know in his apartment and apparently she actually went on to with this band um to be fairly like successful outside the game so you know you can actually buy records of this 
you know quite a few records of this band that came from Romania number 203 so I think that's quite fascinating really that they it kind of had like a real world you know thing beyond the game which you know has sadly been relegated to um, the Dreamcast and then later the PlayStation I think it might have had a, a, a sequel as well on the PlayStation 2 so yeah that's uh, Romania number 203 I think I feel like Mike might have a lot to say about this as well and uh, Stephen so you know the floor is over to you guys oh, me me oh it's me um <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's a good game it's, it's a good game it's a really weird game um, i think i talked to, to lewis before about it a couple of years ago i think um it's a it's a very odd game and i can't actually remember a huge amount of detail about the game when i played it but i just remember thinking the entire time that this is one of those games where there's probably lots and lots of these kind of games on other consoles and we never really get to play them because other libraries are much larger. Um, and the Dreamcast has allowed us to experience these kind of games, which are import titles because of the libraries being smaller. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just a very odd uh, teenage game. It just reminds me a lot of being a teenager stuck in my room a lot. It's a bit weird, but it's it's good. The game. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I definitely agree. It's It's very, very weird. Um, and what's crazy is like, I had only like heard it, heard of it in passing before and like saw screenshots and I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. It's like a room simulator, you know, you just like hang out as like a Japanese adult or teen or whatever. And then like, I started watching this playthrough, uh, Inugami Karon, uh, she's like a VTuber did like this playthrough of it. Uh, and it was the most amazing playthrough I've ever seen, but then it got me to actually play it a bit. Like, one of the biggest parts I remember that I was like, okay, this is just incredibly strange. There's a part where, like, somebody's trying to either kill you or her. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And, like, to keep you both safe, the girl, like, gets the house put on a train that is constantly <laughs> moving. So, like, you look out the window and, like, buildings are going by and stuff, but you're still in your house or your apartment or whatever. It's, like... It, it doesn't uh, have any attachment to reality. It's it's yeah. such an amazing game that way. It's like you just never have any idea of what's going to happen uh, while you're playing it. So it also has like a really odd intro of like some guys, like a live action intro of like some guys playing mahjong or something, and then it like you're watching this and you're thinking, what the hell? Like this isn't the game that I've seen, you know, in the clips. And then it kind of zooms out and it's actually the guy watching it, I think, on the TV. And you're just thinking like, I mean, obviously, I don't know what the guys in the clip are saying, but I, I was like seeing this and like thinking, what? <laughs> like, what is this? Like, it is bonkers. And unfortunately, that's probably why it probably didn't really come over to the West. I, I, I'll tell you what as well. One of my favorite video game covers is the sequel on PlayStation 2, where it's just like the the guy, and he's just got a tear running down his face, but he's like grinning. And it's just like the most Japanese video game cover I've ever <laughs> seen. Like everyone look it up if you have a moment. It's very amusing, like just to just as a spectacle, that cover. But yeah, so it's a really cool game, and um it's just cool that uh I guess the people at Sega let, you know, certain members of the team just kind of dabble in making their own games, I guess. So that's kind of cool as well. So yeah, good old Sega. Oh, um, one other thing I'll say about the uh, uh, Corona VTuber or Corona VTuber playing it. Uh, somebody also translated all of the actual in-game speaking. <laughs> so if, if like you wanted to be able to actually kind of see everything play out with translated dialogue like that's a really good way to experience it so just something to look oh, cool. up later if you're interested nice excellent yeah that's definitely something to look at it's uh like like you said at the beginning lewis it sounds like a difficult one if you don't speak any japanese at all to really mm -hmm. get into properly so that that sounds like a really good option if you can't or if you can't get a hold of this game if you don't have a gdmu which if you don't why not uh because all these <laughs> games you could get on your GDMU. I feel like I'm an advertisement for the GDMU now. I mean, if if you don't have a GDMU, you you should go get a GDMU. Like it's yeah. it's just yeah. the best decision. 
absolutely <laughs> it, it feels like somebody could be like making quite a lot of money by like pre like pre doing dreamcast with the gdmu still in it like because ha- ha- having to send your own dreamcast away it's like oh uh, yeah it's weird like i sent mine away to get it done and i was sending it to a friend so i knew where i was going but it was like it, it felt weird not having my dreamcast there and yeah. having somebody else handle it i was like oh, that's mine I know. what if he breaks it <laughs> what's gonna happen it's I come mean, back you'll, fine <laughs> you'll see them on ebay for like 350 plus and mm. i'm like that's crazy yeah it is but like one of my favorite ones though is like this guy modded his dreamcast so that i mean obviously it has a gdmu in it and now there's no purpose to open the disk drive, but also there's no purpose for the open button. So he literally molded everything smooth. So the only thing on the top of it is just that like smooth crescent, like no circles or anything, and one power button. It just looks insane. <laughs> huh. Nice. Very cool. That's very cool. Um, all right, before we do make this into a GDMU episode, which this is not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I could talk about it all day, honestly. Um, we we'll move on to the next game, which is actually a really interesting one, Lewis, because in this one holds a bit of a special place for you at the moment, right? Yeah. So this this is my opportunity to to uh, what's the phrase like hawk my wares? Is that is that a, is that a sentence? <laughs> hawk my wares. Okay. Yeah. To plug yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and yeah. So the second game I wanted to talk about is um, Nakaruru. Uh, the gift she gave me that is what um it cut the subtitle kind of translates to um and this is um one where you know if we're talking about why it was left in japan it's pretty obvious it's another one of those darn visual novels that people in the west still kind of have an aversion to obviously we've seen you know kind of gameplay elements of it seep into like popular games and um, there's been a few sort of vaguely kind of popular ones like Steins Gate and stuff like that, but mostly it's a pretty um, niche genre still. It has its fans, but yeah, it's uh, kind of underrated, I think, and mainly in my opinion because uh, it kind of it's a bit weird whether or not their games or their you know stories, you know. So that's kind of half the problem with them, but uh, yeah. If you want to know more about Dreamcast Visual Novels, check out the episode me and Mike did. I'm, all, I'm going to plug that one until the end of time. <laughs> but this particular visual novel has always been one that I think the community has been vaguely interested in because unlike the other visual novels on the Dreamcast, well, the majority of them are just kind of like, you know, sort of ports of, you know, PC games. Um with kind of characters you've never seen and are probably a bit forgettable. Um, This one has the main character is a very beloved character from the Samurai Showdown or Samurai Spirits series by SNK, you know, obviously a big game on the Neo Geo. Um, And so this one has always obviously piqued people's interests for having, um, you know, being about that character. Um, And it's basically a visual novel that tells the story of an orphan named Makato and her time as the assistant to Nakaruru, who is the shrine maiden of the village in which this takes place. And and it's based during the Ainu period, which is like a very interesting bit of Japanese history that I recommend people look up if you, if you want to know some more about kind of this game. Um, but yeah, the reason it's got a place in my heart is because I'm actually involved um in the project to translate it with uh, our good buddy derek um he mentioned that he was interested in translating this and i've got a lot of uh experience like editing and you know writing myself and i was like you know can i be an editor because i really want to i want to see this translated and so yeah roll on you know a few months of of work uh, I'd say we're probably about, you know, 19% translated. It's been a, a very enjoyable process. Like one thing that's really fun about being an editor for something like this is that challenge of, yeah, I want to keep the essence of the translation, but also make it sound uh, less literal, I suppose. Mm. And yeah, so there's been quite a lot of challenge, but it's like really rewarding. So yeah, I'm, and it's, it's like really... Um, 
exciting to basically be on as you translate you're kind of almost playing the game um and reading the story and yeah it's a really really good story it's just very heartfelt and just yeah very nice and um when it come when the translation comes out i think everyone will really like it so yeah that's nakaruru awesome. yes please let me know definitely whenever that's done <laughs> so that's amazing yeah. Yeah, it's um, it is quite a lot. A lot of it is just text, but there are a few sort of like little mini games. They're nothing, obviously, that unlike another game that's coming up soon that is part visual novel. It's not like that. Um, yeah. It's it's pretty much just a visual novel with like the odd little kind of cute thing here and there. Like, you know, there's like a sort of almost I think like the kind of like the ocarina in um, Zelda. You know, repeating kind of a, a pattern or. There's one where you have to like find something in a dark room. You know, you've got like a spotlight. There's like little kind of cool things like that, yes. but mainly you're playing it for the story. Yeah, it's uh, it'll be a good treat, especially for Samurai Showdown fans, um, because it's just like a big part of the the fandom. Um, yeah, it's just, like free lore. Yeah, exactly. They wouldn't be able to play if they can't speak Japanese, and it's just been stuck in Japan. It's really awesome. Uh, definitely one for people to put on their GDMEs. No, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> very excited for that to come out. Uh, it, it's nice to be able to get some of these visual novels out there. I'm sure that, you know, I, I think it, there's been a couple translated already, right? If I'm remembering rightly. Uh, not re- I think not really visual novels, except for this weird one that we won't go into called Divi Dead. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think Derek's kind of big aim for this is for it to be like the first, you know, fan translated visual novel on the Dreamcast. Obviously, there are visual novels on the Dreamcast that have been translated on PC, you know, like a lot of things like Canon and Air and ones like that and uh, Ever 17 and stuff like that. But have you ever tried to play a visual novel on Dream? Because I've done this before on dreamcast with uh google translate like the video mm-hmm. version of it yeah yeah um i was actually going to ask mike if have you ever uh, gone through nakaruru at all i don't know apart from just sort of the same as i've done with all visual novels just sort of a, a couple of hours spent with google translate and uh attempts to try and look at what's going on um I, i've yeah i think i think most games i've had a couple of hours on but no more than that okay yeah, it's a yeah. So I like this is the thing. I when as I'm speaking about this, I'm really excited for you all to play it. You know, hopefully get it out there soon. Yeah, probably okay. not soon. Probably like next year. <laughs> it's a big game to translate. Yeah, I guess that's why nobody's really tackled them before. Is that there's a lot to do, right? So hopefully, like not you said, this will text. be the first of uh, many to come. That would be that would be excellent. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Well, thank you very much, Lewis. Those are your two games. And uh, we're going to move on now to Mike's choices. Mm. Come on then, Mike. What have you got for us this time? <laughs> that was a, a sigh of resignation. <laughs> Come on. Really what, what, what random weirdness have you got See, for us this time? I mean, I've I did through for... Mania, so yeah, <laughs> that's as weird I, as it gets. I, yeah, because, well, yeah, there's not much, much well, it'll bleed, I suppose, but um, there's not... My God, choices aren't really random. Um, they're more... I think I'm, I'm a bit of a sort of curveball uh, mood today, really. Um, so I've picked two games uh, which, yeah, I don't think most people would pick. Um, and the first one uh, is, I'm not going to try and pronounce Japanese uh, pronunciation of this because I will butcher it um, and Ross will send me hate mail. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically it's, it's the Let's Make J-League Professional Soccer Club games, which are a series of three games two main series entries and one special edition um and they are basically uh football manager games so and when i say football i mean soccer um they are basically football manager games which there's no there's no play at all so it's not sort of a player manager type game it's just literally the management side of it but they're very visual they're very graphic um the series did actually start on the saturn i believe and it did progress after Dreamcast. And actually, I think it did appear in PAL Territories as, I think it's Let's Make a Soccer Team, which is a game which many people probably saw in bargain bins at like five pounds on the PS2 many, many years ago. Um, it's not the greatest series of all time. Let's, I'm not gonna you know, sort of uh, give a game here which is is literally undiscovered gold. It's got its, its flaws. But it's actually just a really fun, interesting game 
even with the translation, plus at the current time, it, it is literally everything's in Japanese. So you do have to have a lot of patience to get through it. Um, I would have loved for it to be over here with the translation because actually I think it's it gives something quite different. For all magic games, are something which I like anyway, always have done. Um, Dreamcast has one with Giant Killers, which is a, a decent game. Um, but this is just really sort of visual. It's, you know, you have to build the stadium, you have to uh, put the concessions into the ground, you have to hire the players, you have to hire the, the staff, you, you build a team where you want to in Japan as part of the J-League. Um, and you, it's everything. There are other games as well as part of this. So you have uh, baseball games of this as well. But the football ones for me are just, just really entertaining and really, really interesting uh, game to, to, to play. It's, it's not easy to get through, but it's, it's fun. And uh, it's something a bit different, which people don't really probably know is on the Dreamcast that well, um, because it's, I suppose it's a niche subject. Retro sports games are always a little bit niche. Um, but it's definitely something which needs to be looked into for those who like the, the more visual for Major experiences. Anyone who remembers games like uh, Ultimate Soccer Major back in 97, 98 on the PC or, or Premier Major back in the 90s as well. Those kind of games. This is very similar to those in its, its style. And it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. It does sound really cool. Like, I, I could see why it would be niche, though, given, like, mm. the main thing that changes in sports games is graphics every year. Sure. And if you're going back, you know, to the older graphics. But, like, I haven't seen a sports game that allows you to, like, add concession stands and, mm. like, hire staff. And it's kind of like, um, what's that one called? Uh, theme park. Mm. Um, it, it goes it, it goes a little bit into sort of uh, that kind of territory, the sort of business management sort of uh, territory, but it's it's more to do with. Um, so we have a history in this country of, of sort of football manager games, which go massively in depth in terms of being able to you know get all of that side of it, almost like a director or the sort of chairman of the team rather than, than the manager. Um, and so it's it's a bit like that. You just you just there's a lot more detail than you would normally get. There's a lot more financial stuff, a lot more of the sim and the, the management style of, of stuff. So there is the elements where I, I suppose it's closer to something like theme park um, than it is actually to to a normal for a manager game. Um, and I think visuals are quite important as well. So the visuals. So this this country and again, I, I don't apologise for this because it's a, a one of my favourite game series. But Football Manager, one of the, the series in this country, is still vastly popular now and only only the last five or six years have the graphics actually been anything more than just pretty much basic text yeah. so it's it's something which i suppose if you're into that kind of game stats are more important which is the one drawback of this game because you can't really understand the stats as well as you would like because it's all in japanese mm. um, but the visual side of it just gives it a little bit of a I suppose it gives it a bit of a Sega flair to it. It feels like a Sega take on a Football Manager game. And I know Football Manager is owned by Sega as well before I get letters of complaint. Um, <laughs> but it's, it is, it feels like a game where Sega's sort of done that. It's, it's, it's a really interesting game. It's, it's fascinating to me as well is the fact that I'm someone who, who used to love going to, you know, rummaging through bargain bins and finding these really obscure games, especially sports games. Um, my PS2 collection was, was pretty much just random sports games. I had, you know, college football games from the States. I had Australian rules football games from Australia. Um, I had the, the compilation of Indian games um, from, from, from India and, and Pakistan, which was a bizarre game. I've, I don't understand what happened in any of those games at all. Um, but I love those kind of games. That's really weird. I have this, to me, as this thing where someone's put, a lot of work into making these games and we sort of relegate them to, to bargain bins and actually i think that's a bit of a disservice to them because someone has to put their heart and soul into it in some, in some cases unless it's a terrible game um and I, it's let's make a soccer team which is what this series morphed into was one of those games where i think everyone just sort of walked past it it's like this daft game that sega's put a name on um sort of a bargain bin uh fodder but actually it's it's got some of the heart and soul to it, which is unusual for this type of game. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I can't say it's one that I would play because I'm not a football fan, but hmm. would either of the, would Lewis, Stephen, would you pick up this one, do you think, if uh, on Mike's recommendation? I would probably play it, yeah. I mean, I just, I love 
games that have interesting mechanics to them and i also live off of obscure games like if nobody's played it i'm like i probably want that but <laughs> um i don't know why it's just like it, it's some like best example is this is going to be a sin but i still don't have sonic adventure 2 and i know i should i get it i should and i want it but like not really bad enough to like go on ebay and pay for it but if i see some game that i've literally never heard of and it's like 40 bucks and then i look it up and the screenshots look cool and i feel like it might be some niche obscure gem or something i will buy that in a heartbeat guaranteed we need to get somebody to send you a copy of sonic adventure 2 my goodness <laughs> 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 lewis is this one you would play um yeah i mean obviously it was in english but um the baseball version of this actually intrigues me a little bit more because I, I do know in japan they're pretty keen on their baseball and i yeah. it's quite interesting um to see that so i'd be quite i'd be also quite intrigued as to how a baseball game would work with like presumably football manager um kind of Systems. Yeah, the the baseball game. So there's baseball management style games are, are, are pretty big. I think with a, a niche or market. I can't remember the name of the game. Is out of the park. I think the name of the series is out of the park, which is quite a big series. But the uh-huh. even more interesting, the, the baseball um, games. You have ones you can play and ones you can manage, and then they morph. So I think the final release for both series on a Dreamcast is actually one where it's both playing and managing. Oh, that's um, cool. It's just a really, yeah, it's a really interesting game. I mean, I, I'm not a massive baseball fan, um, but it, another another uh, game series which sort of intrigues me that it's uh, again, he, if you had to list all the genres of games that were on the Dreamcast, I don't think many people would probably put down uh, baseball management or football management. So it's just interesting to me that it's it's like that, and they're and they're all pretty cheap. You know, I mean that most days on eBay you'll find a listing for a few pounds still which is is it's worth it if you've got a working dreamcast with a with a gd1 drive it's definitely worth getting it okay well your, your next choice so i watched yes. some youtube videos before doing this because obviously i wasn't sure what most of these were hmm. and this is i wasn't expecting this from this game no. <laughs> tell us what your game is and what, and what it's about yeah, so I think if if I was to come here and say that I'm going to talk about an Arthurian legend based pinball game um, that wasn't known by most Dreamcast fans, I think people would probably think I'm insane, which I am. But um, yeah, that is what it is. Neo Golden. I'm going to say I'm going to butcher this pronunciation as well. Probably I always do. Neo Golden Logris or Neo Golden Logs Logos. I don't. I'm not quite sure. Paper that it. sounds like a cough suite or something. It does, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> it does sound. It is one of the oddest sounding and oddest uh, presented games in terms of you're not going to know what the kind of game is. You look at the cover. Uh, there's actually no. A hint that this game is a pinball game. It's a multi-table pinball game uh, based around Arthurian legend. It's based around lots of sort of mythology from from ancient Britain. It's got li- interlinked tables, so you can go through it as a sort of a, a unlock certain parts and go to the tables. I will caveat all of what I've said and what I will say by saying the game isn't actually that great. The reason yeah. I've picked it is that it's playable. It's playable now without knowing any Japanese at all. Um, and although it's not the greatest game, it's still definitely enjoyable and passable, and especially with GDE Muse. Um, and I'm, I'm still calling it GDE Muse. It's a bizarre name. Um, <laughs> it's it's a great game to have on, on that because actually it's you're not going to want to put any money towards it. You're not going to really want to go out and actually you know sit on the shelf because it is not the best game in the world, but it's, it's good fun for a short time at least. It's a game which was on the PC before, so it was on the PC before, and I, it did get improved for Dreamcast, from what I can tell, um, and so it isn't quite as clunky as it originally was, but it fits into this tradition in Japan where pinball games, they have quite a few pinball games which are, are really dynamic, they're really different than just sort of having, you know, some bloke put some games that they've, they found down the pub onto a, onto a game and then sell it to people thinking it's the same experience. They've they've not done that it's not about recreating the feeling of going down and you know with sticky floors in a pub and trying to play pinball it's it's not like that it's it's similar in ways to something like 
I suppose, Sonic Spinball in terms of the fact that it's it's probably not really a pinball game only. Don't worry, you don't, you don't have a ball which sort of then walks around afterwards as well, like Sonic Spinball did. And a little bit like some like Psycho Pinball on the Mega Drive, or the interconnected tables, and you can you can play around. So yeah, it's interesting. Like the theme's interesting as well. I mean, you don't really have much on on the Dreamcast, which is sort of based on mythology and history. So it's it's really interesting, and it's got some very very light RPG elements to it as well. There's uh, there's a bit of trying to pretend that it's it's got some more depth than maybe it, it actually does. Um, the perspective is a bit weird. I mean, it's it's squashed. Pimple games are notorious for the fact that actually how they present it is not always the best. I know that now we've got a switch, we get pimple games in a really really good fashion if you hold the switch. Uh, on its side but they've always struggled to sort of get the perspective correctly and this is another one where it's all squashed it yeah. a little, little bit weird i but wish pinball games had tape mode yeah yeah i think that's that is it i think it's it, it's it's an odd genre isn't it on, on, especially when you look at games which are based on meant to be played on crt tvs it's it's never really the best format for a pinball game um, and this definitely suffers from that. And also, it's it's punishingly hard as well. It is punishingly mm. hard. Mike, are there any other pinball games on the Dreamcast? Yeah, so there's one more, Pro Pinball Trilogy, which is a, a European game, uh, just recent, pal. Uh, got a few mm. tables on there, which is, I think, based on a series of games which were released individually on the PC, if I remember rightly, or Amiga, okay. possibly. Um, yeah. I think I was aware of that one. Yeah, it's, that's pretty good, actually. I mean, actually, you that's another example, a, bit, a little bit like... Um, sorry, Soul Calibur, with a game which looks absolutely like it shouldn't exist in the Dreamcast era. You, you play it now, oh, wow. it, it's really high res. The graph, the, the tables are really, really high res. Yeah, it looks um, great. And wow. actually, it's it, it plays pretty well. It plays pretty well. It's just right. it's quite quite interesting uh, that uh, comment about it shouldn't exist in the Dreamcast era. Well, in the case of there's these pinball games, it's like, I mean, how many were there on the Saturn? I feel like there's like tons yeah, yeah. Tons of them. Mm-hmm. it's like it almost feels like this this game that you you've, you're speaking about um kind of almost came a little bit like that unlike the one that you've you've just mentioned the the one that was released in europe mm. like that almost feels probably more like a, a dreamcast pinball game whereas when you look at videos of this one yeah um it the neo golden whatever it's called it, it feels like it's almost like a leftover from the Saturn, but that's not to discredit it, of course. It just mm. it's, it feels like it's kind of a little bit kind of in the wrong era, perhaps. I think I think maybe though that's probably more of a sign that Saturn's so popular in Japan that all these really sort of niche genres that are really popular on PC in Japan got console ports, and so in Japan they had loads of pinball games because of the fact that it was always quite popular in PCs. I think yeah. we didn't get much on Dreamcast because obviously Dreamcast didn't have quite as as broad a library in Japan. So I think maybe that's the reason. I'm not sure, but yeah, I mean, Saturn's got an absolute ton of them. Um, and some, some really good ones actually but this is different i think even than that i don't think i've played any any pinball game on any platform actually which is is quite like this it, it's one of those games where it's, it's very difficult for me to say to you play it because it's brilliant but it's very very easy for me to tell you play it to experience it because it is something which is quite unique and quite unusual at least it, from a, a drink perspective. It, it's an oddity is it it is an oddity yes nice we do like an oddity. Like a bit Always of a good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have two notes on this one before we move on. Mm. Um, one, the cover looks like a TurboGrafx-16 game. Yes. Yes. Um, 100%. Two, 100%. Uh, it's made by Success, who mm. made the Cotton series. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, definitely have a look at that. And don't play a lot of pinball games. I, the, the last pinball I played in real life was a Star Wars one in the mm. Namco arcade that they closed down in London by the London Eye. And it was the only game I played there because everything was so jam-packed and one of the paddles wasn't working. So I couldn't <laughs> even play that. <laughs> Wasted the, a pound. The last, uh, uh, last pinball game I played was a Beatles-themed pinball in Liverpool. So, of mm, course, yeah. it was in Liverpool, you know. <laughs> I, like, I like a bit of pinball. I like a bit of pinball. I, I saw I had, a, I had, a, had someone I knew who had a, the Star Trek Next Generation pinball machine at their house. Oh, they wow. would taunt me every day by coming in and showing me pictures of the, of the Star Trek pinball machine. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> well, that'd be pricey. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, Did they though. take new pictures of it every day, or was it just the yes. same picture? Oh no, oh. and it was, and it would be him draped over the pinball machine as well. 
It was, it was, it was literally. He was. It got to the point where it was, it was becoming uh, a bit too much. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then, and then of course I got a Switch game which had it on it, which, uh, which was absolutely no comfort to me at all. But I still remember that pinball machine some days. Oh dear, oh dear. All right, before we get <laughs> lost in melancholy, let's uh, move on to Stephen's choices. Um, so, Stephen, tell us about your first choice. So, um, my first choice is Baldur Force EXE. It's amazing. It's I, I really am very much into visual novels. Um, I think they're like a very cool part of Japanese culture. So I'm kind of obsessed over all that stuff. So like I wound up playing a few when I was younger, but then I saw this one and I saw a bit of the gameplay that was not the visual novel part. And I was pretty much instantly sold. So it's like it's like a mech uh, battle arena type game where you get to literally upgrade what weapons your robot uses, what moves he has, um, what his abilities are, and how fast he moves and everything else. And it's actually an insanely detailed like mech battle type game. It's very action oriented, it's very fast. And then also there's like the story side of it, which if you use like, I usually put my phone on a tripod and then set it up in front of the TV and then it'll just like automatically translate everything for me. But basically, as I understand it, you're like some hacker group named Steppenwolf. And there's this whole, uh, it's like an online grid that everybody connects to. And that's how people actually hack because all the mechs aren't real. You're like, you're driving programs essentially. And um, that's all like part of hacking. So you're in like a virtual world the entire time. And it's like a mix between jacking in and then jacking out of it. And um yeah, it's really cool. And a lot of the aspects of like double crossing people and like um, which girl you wind up with at the end and all that, I wound up with a pretty dope ending. I was very happy with it. Um, that was actually one of my first uh, video game reviews uh, for Dreamcast Hub. Cause I was like, this is very weird and people need to see it. How does no one know this exists? <laughs> I will, I will uh, just jump in there again um speaking about steven's reviews for dreamcast hub uh, when i was looking up this game you know to kind of get a better understanding of it for the episode his video is like top one that comes up and yes. it's like incredibly informative <laughs> and i was like because i i was look, watching the gameplay as he as he was explaining it and i just thought if i put this on my console and try to play it i'd just be like baffled where and you, you do a really good job of explaining it so yeah anyone who wants Thank to you. know about it check that video out i appreciate that yeah and what's crazy is it was originally like a pc hentai game and that was like its yeah. whole purpose and of course uh once it came to dreamcast and ps2 they removed all the good stuff i mean inappropriate stuff uh and um i have actually recently found the um Japanese version for PC like I actually had to buy the disc and everything and then downloaded the uh, English patch for it and if anybody's ever looking to do it it does work it does wind up being in English and you could play the entire game in English now we just need to make that happen for Dreamcast it's weird to have like a game that was originally like an Oroje game but it's also like some kind of like RPG it has like, other gameplay elements it's not just like you, yep. you read stuff and then it's like porn <laughs> it's kind of interesting but obviously it's all ages on dreamcast that reminds me of um uh omega labyrinth life that was another one i got for switch recently which is just it's so damn fun it's such a good game but it's kind of like that in the same way i had a look on youtube to see what this was actually about and uh, the actual kind of combat sections i just wasn't expecting that from it and it looks yeah. really cool very cool. It's so fun and it's so fast. That's like the main thing I love about it. And the, and the story's good too, but like man, the the parts were and there's like a new game plus mode where you go in with all your upgrades and then you can like get more upgrades so you can like just completely max out your robot. Cool. I I feel like was this was this part of a series or did it become a series like a, an anime or anything like that cuz I yeah. feel like there was more to it. Yeah, it was like based on an anime, as I understand it, also a manga. I actually wound up buying, after I got the game and became obsessed with it, I wound up buying the anime on DVD, uh, another version of the anime on DVD, and the soundtrack. And I was very happy with those. <laughs> Soundtrack's really good. 
Cool. Is, there, is this what is this game quite expensive though now? The mm, pr- yeah. probably. I hope I have something to do with that at least. I remember I, I wanted to go up. But... <laughs> I remember Stephen talking about it to us um, when he was on a podcast a couple of years ago. Um, I think after you did a review, I think probably quite shortly after you did a review. And uh, that sounds right. The game was was just like sky. Well, in this country, I mean, it was difficult to get it for under hundred pounds. Um, it's gone down a little bit since then. But it's um, it's still one of the, the rarer games, and it's, there's also a, a pre-order releases in Japan. Also had a little figure with it as well. We we'll get a figure with it, which is even harder to get hold of. Uh, I didn't know about that. I need one. <laughs> yeah, yeah they're, they're pretty cool. I mean, it's a proper sort of like uh, I've, I haven't actually seen the figure in person, but I think it's a sort of a, I'll say a plastic. It's not a metal diecast one, but it's a plastic figure, which can a sort of poseable figure to go with it. So he's giving Stephen something else to yeah. buy and add to his collection. I, uh, I hate that I know that exists now because <laughs> now I'm on eBay and I need new things. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> it's not my fault, but my wife thanks you. <laughs> uh, this night's going to end with a few hundred dollars being spent by Stephen. The main man on the podcast told me about it. It's not my fault. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, talking about mechs. Uh, yes. We'll move on to your next game, which, uh, which is, is mechs again, I think. It is. So this is Frame Guide by From Software. Um, so like a lot of people are unaware that From Software made games on Dreamcast, unless I'm wrong about that. But usually when I tell people, they're very surprised because um, obviously all they're known now is mainly for like Bloodborne and for um, Dark Souls and Demon Souls and all that. But uh, yeah, it was like a mech game where it, it was kind of like an arena battle in a similar way, but in 3D. But the cool part about it was you could change every single part of your mech. Like there was like a shield piece. You had, I I believe guns. No, I think it was swords. I'm trying to remember back. And uh, like you could change out your head, your torso, your arms, your legs. And what was really cool is it had this gem system where as you would beat people or defeat different, um, different enemies going like across this map, like there's like a top down map that you, Uh, select a new location and you battle the person there and then you get these gems and you get to like fuse them so based on how and which colors of gems you fuse together you get like a different headpiece or a different arm piece or different legs and they all perform very differently too but it, it, it actually has pretty solid mechanics for a mech game like it feels more like you're piloting um golems than like high tech mechs because they all look like they're kind of iron and like stone or something um yeah just like old 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 english metal if that makes any sense uh but yeah it's it's a whole lot of fun and um it definitely feels like a a high quality game from from software yeah had a very like steampunk-esque look to it like lots of that's a better description yeah I agree with that. Like- Lots of machinery and then kind of almost like it's it's arena based, right? So you're fighting it's one on one fighting kind of a an in, not not necessarily enclosed, but it's a like a walled arena. It might be invisible walls, yeah. but it like pretends to be like outside and in the open. But yeah, you definitely have areas you have to stop. And there are guns. Now that I remember, yeah, there's definitely guns. <laughs> it does look very cool. And it and it is almost you can almost see the transition from going something like that onto obviously they made games in between, but onto something like um dark souls where they've got kind of very similar designs for some of the enemies that they have with the mm-hmm. yeah like the, the helmets and, are very yeah. similar exactly so it's quite it's interesting and like you say not not a lot of people know that from software did a game for the dreamcast uh and it's it's pretty awesome that they did and this is one that i really do definitely want to play and is definitely oh. my gdmu also, so, um, the best part about that is this actually is available completely in english like 100 percent in english amazing so, um, like, I have a, a section on my site where I put, like, on dreamcasthub.com where I put all, like, the translations. And I think I have, like, 23 translated Dreamcast games up there uh, from Eng- from Japanese to English. And there's, like, one or two from French to English. But, um, yeah, that's one of them. It's, it's, it's so worth getting the translated version. It just feels like a legit game at that point. Nice. Mike, is this one that you have a lot of time for? Yeah, it's a good game. It's uh, one of those games where you can play without having to 
to have a massive amount of knowledge Japanese. There is a fully translated version, but even the original version was pretty understandable. Um, yeah, it's a good game. I'm not I'm not a massive mech fan anyway, so I always sort of it wouldn't be my first choice of game. But it's definitely a game which, uh, especially from the pedigree it has, um, is definitely something uh, worth seeking out. For sure, Lewis, have you played this one at all? I've not actually played this one yet. I'm I'm quite aware of it, and uh, it is one I I just need to to pick up at some point because, unlike a lot of other from software games, um, it is pretty cheap to get hold of. It must have been fairly popular because it just seems like there's abundance of copies on eBay. Um, but you know, probably if you're going to go for the the better way of playing it, that uh, the translation that uh, Stephen mentioned. Um, it's obviously the way to go. Support our fellow Dreamcast fans in the community who are translating these games. Yeah, definitely. It looks interesting. And, you know, talking about From Software games, it, it also looks like possibly one of the more accessible ones, which is yeah. always good. doesn't look like it's overly difficult. Like, it looks like it's uh, it's fun to play rather than a bit of a grind. Well, you know, depends on your, on your taste in games, I suppose. But, uh, yeah bit more of an accessible one definitely gonna give it a try looks good well we were actually meant to have um another person on with us today which was james and we're not gonna go through his games in depth but i thought it's worth mentioning briefly the games that he was going to choose uh because they're two very interesting games uh so we'll do that briefly before we wrap up um so his first choice was mobile suit gundam federation versus xeon and dx and I believe this is the one that we, he, the reason he chose this is I think this is one that's recently brought, been brought back online. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. He's uh, sunk up many, many hours into this one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think he's mentioned um, it before in an episode, hasn't he? And he's, uh, yeah. he's rather keen on, I mean, he's, he's big on the online stuff as it is, but uh, any, any excuse as soon as a, as soon as a new, a new game gets uh, brought back online, he's straight on it. And uh, but I think he's got a, quite a big fondness for this one. It, it looks quite interesting. Again, another, another mech game, right? But um, mm-hmm. kind of online mech battling game. So it looks quite interesting. I think it was just a big surprise, wasn't it? Because it was a game that people had passed it by, and then suddenly it was online, and it was like, oh, okay, this is pretty awesome. Like nice, mm-hmm. like you know, a Gundam game we can all play online. So yeah, that is pretty cool. This game is the whole reason that I'm building a Dream Pie right now. Um, I think it was PC Wizard I saw playing it, and uh, or PC Wizard 13 I saw playing it, and it was like some live stream or something, and I was like, that looks like an amazing amount of fun. Plus, I mean, eventually, like, yeah, I definitely want to do live streaming and stuff, but I can't until there's, like, an online game. Like, Mm -hmm. and uh, that's definitely one that I feel like would be worth building a uh, Dream Pie for, so I can't wait to play it does look pretty cool you've now made me think he said pc wizards and pc wizards 13 i know his name is pc wizard 13 what happened to 1 through 12 where are they <laughs> what's going on with them mm. they were just we, we iterations that failed and we never knew about them yeah we, we don't talk about the first 12 wizards andrew <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'll shut up um, so the the second game that james uh, was going to bring to the table and one that i've kind of had a kind of had a want to play it since i saw a screenshot of it hmm. is zuzar vazar am i uh, pronouncing that correctly yes you are yes. probably yeah <laughs> you can you can also pronounce it as that fucking weird one yeah yeah it's it, is it, is it mechanical animals yeah um yep. on ch- yeah. kind of drawing chariots yeah it's yeah. it's blood yeah. racing chariots. with animals that are mechanical yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. They look like so, um, the Megazords from Power Rangers. Yeah, like. yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the weirdest, just, I mean, I, the, I'd love to be at a meeting where they decided to make this game because <laughs> it makes, I mean, I mean, you know, let's, let's make a racing game. Yeah, cool. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, let's make it with like animals. Yeah, yeah, that sounds a bit weird. Yeah. Let's make the animals pull in a chariot. Okay, yeah. Or let's also make them fly in. Yeah, okay. That's, now you've gone weird. Yeah, it's the game's, the game's weird. Um, but actually, even though the game has been sort of, uh, I think some some Dreamcast fans will will say it's an awful racing game. Uh, actually, it's, it's pretty good fun, um, it and it does take a little bit of time, especially the the flying bits. So you have three: you have you have water based ones, you have land based ones, and you have um, air based ones. The air based ones are quite difficult to get hold 
difficult to get your head around because you've got to use, uh, I remember rightly, it's been a while since I've played it, but you've got to use the triggers to then sort of control each bird or each, each fly animal. So obviously when you actually have to turn corners, it's, it's a bit weird to get your head around. Um, but actually it's a pretty fun game. It looks it looks pretty cool as well. So it's it's not as bad as, as some might say, but it is utterly, utterly bizarre. <laughs> Damn. Even I, more bizarre than Romania. Even more bizarre uh, than Romania. Uh, I paid actual money for a physical copy at one time. Mm, mm. I still have it. <laughs> yep, yep. It was a good decision, I think. Yeah. Uh, looks, looks definitely interesting. I mean, on the on the racing game scale, is it above or below Spirit of Speed? Oh, above. Okay. But then, but then Sonic Adventure is above it on the racing game scale, even though it's not a racing game because Spirit of Speed is terrible. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't good, say it. I've said that deliberately to a Wayne James up as well. I was going to say it's a good job he's not on. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's a game. It is weird. I think if you do like this kind of bizarre racing game, which isn't really you know normal, um, there's a one of the mini games in the second um, game in the series. I've forgotten the name of the series now, which is quite embarrassing. So just talk about yourselves whilst I remember the name of the series. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, um, hopefully Lewis is going to tell me the name of the series. Give me uh, some hints. Oh, it's the it's the one with the second game's called uh, Double Love and Tondre thingy. Oh, what's it called? oh Sengoku uh, Turd. That's it. Let me go back. Yeah, right. Sengoku Turd. So yeah, so um, it's very similar to one of the mini games in uh, the second uh, game in the Sengoku Turb series, um, a game series that I I know very well and always remember the name of. Um, <laughs> there's there's, there's a, of the second one. Yeah, there's, there's a mini game in the second in a sequel to it, so it's based at sort of similar rate, similar sort of fashion. So obviously weird racing mechanical animal games in Japan is obviously a big a big thing. Big seller. Yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> it's also the last and en- last game in Mike's A to Z of Dreamcast games. Yeah. I'm 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 getting really sort of paranoid that one day one of the developers is gonna bring out a game which is gonna come after it and then it's gonna destroy <sighs> Ooh, that needs Ooh, to happen on purpose. Yeah, I know. It's, it's going to win it. It's that would be such a good move. Up. That would be yeah. hella smart. Do you yeah. want me to edit this bit out, Mike? Which bit? <laughs> or the bit, where, the bit where I tell people what not to do? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, no, because I'm, you know, the the, the guys never come out anyway because a, a indie developer, which I'm not going to name, is not releasing their damn games at all, so they're going to release. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And the bloody French publisher. That yeah. begins with P and ends in Ixel Heart. But yeah, they, I mean they are going to release they are going to release the games, but um, it is it is proven to be a very long drawn out process, and I am now doubting that they ever have these games. Oh snap! Hmm. Interesting. Starting fires here on the podcast. Yeah, so that's a discussion <laughs> for another episode. They, they actually are due out next uh, two weeks time, I believe. Okay. Ooh. So I believe we are going to get the the six games in two weeks' time, and nice. I'm looking forward yeah. to them. I I actually love uh, Pixel Heart and Josh yeah. Radden. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm still I'm on the fence about buying one of their um, Dreamcast Legends titles. Which uh, which one? So what they found a bunch of old. I mean, we've mentioned this a few times in the pod. So anybody listening to this will be like, they're mentioning it again. Um, <laughs> they basically they found a bunch of new stock for european dreamcast games um mm-hmm. and now they're selling them so they had like metropolis street racer new and sealed like loads of them um tomb raider chronicles like just a bunch of of mm. you know classic dreamcast games but they were still sealed and pristine condition which is pretty that's cool. smart yeah I think, I think it's it worth mentioning they are italian versions i believe that's right yeah, yeah. Mm. The, the halifax branded ones is that's that right? right yeah yes yeah. It, yeah there's a few out of the bunch that they're selling where it's like they doesn't they don't have the english is it just the mic is it just they don't have the english text on the back but can be played in english or are they just not in english um i i, I don't think i've actually ever played one of the italian releases so i don't actually know whether okay. you can actually play in english but yeah there's a couple of them which i imagine probably it's just an italian because the discs are different so the actual discs themselves mm. um are different than the discs that we got released in um, in in the UK, so I imagine with sort of like Tomb Raider, I think it's Tomb Raider. Is it Tomb Raider: Last Revelation they've got on there, or is it Chronicles? I, I think they've had is. both. They've had both on there. Yeah, so I, I yeah. think with that, I think um, it's probably going to be just an Italian. But then, then not many games got Italian releases with, with sort of Italian language anyway. It was mostly the English version with Italian subtitles. So mm. it, it could very well be. How uh, much are they charging? Um, I know Metropolis Street Racer. They're curious. charging like twenty five euro for. Uh, some of them are higher. They had Toy Commander, which I think was more like thirty-five. Mm-hmm. So 
Yeah, not so, terrible yeah. pricing. Yeah, it's pretty fair. Mm. Definitely, I'm interested in Metropolis Street Racer because I only have a disc version of that, and I could then just leave it sealed and just have a sealed Dreamcast game on my shelf just because, Ooh. you know. <laughs> just, uh, I love having two copies when one is sealed, and I'm just like, I never have to open you. Yeah, yeah but but with with Metropolis Street Racer, though, if you get if you have a game which is sealed on Metropolis Street Racer, you might have the one which is bugged. Yeah. Oh. Mm, you see, it's only bugged if you take. open it. That's true. It's a fair point. It's a very yeah. fair point, actually. Yeah. Yeah, just a nice display piece. But now I'm worried that it won't have any English text on the back, and it's kind of like, oh, okay. Get my Google Translate app out and just translate the back with that. That's probably the best way to do it, right? So There you go. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. GDMU and Google Translate, those are the things that sponsor us today's DreamPod. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, man, this would be so profitable. <laughs> <laughs> if they're listening, if you want to sponsor us in any way, absolutely, we'll take money. Wait, we get paid? <laughs> you don't <laughs> yeah i'm i'm also it. not uh getting paid as well either also, also <laughs> carry <I'm>... on <laughs> i do love the fact that so we did we did actually receive or tom more more, more likely received <laughs> an offer of sponsorship right <laughs> yeah yeah, like, yeah. Oh, definitely should still get him we're not going to mention it on this episode who offered him sponsorship but uh Let's just say it, he should probably take it. It's, uh, it's a great was it, deal. Was it erectile dysfunction? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have a feeling it would be erectile dysfunction. I'm not sure why. I just feel like they would sponsor us. Um, it's fair enough, isn't it, really? Get the money yeah. how you can. Yeah. I think you're getting warmer when you're thinking about that area of the body, though. Yeah, I, think, we'll I, think, I, think find, I think you'll find that's a problem. That's the issue. Get older, you get this. You see, Lewis has got his head of you. Oh, dear. Okay, well... Let's leave it at that, shall we? Um, I think we've talked through quite a few interesting games there. And uh, if you want to play them, feel free to go track them down on eBay if they're not too much money. Or if you have money to burn, why not? Um, or if not, then they can all be found, of course, uh, to add to your GDMU. Or Just burn gonna... to CDR. We, need, we forget this. Of course. Wait, yeah. what's a CDR? It's um, this shiny thing from the past that you can put Dreamcast games on. Nice. If you're feeling masochistic, you can put it on your dream shell. So there you go. Do, do people even know what Utopia boot disc is anymore? Uh, do, do people still see that moose on their Dreamcast, the, the 3D I, moose? I use it. I use. I don't use. I don't use Utopia. I use. Uh, I use DCX. Yeah, the Utopia yeah, doesn't work with VGA. I, so. I have. I have a GDMU, and I also have a, uh, a CD, a CF card reader. But for some reason, I'm still an idiot and forget I have either of those and just play it with a boot disc instead. <laughs> I just play it on the Japanese Dreamcast. Yeah, all that as well. Yeah. I mean, that way you can get one of the really nice Japanese consoles, right? Like a nice Hello Kitty one or a... I want Resident one so Monica. bad. That's like my yeah. dream Japanese Dreamcast, but I'll never have it. They are, they are cool. Never say never. never Mine's say clear never. green. Ooh, That's pretty nice. nice. Yeah, I dig it. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's wrap things up and uh, say our goodbyes uh so we'll start with you steven uh just let us know where people can find you online and uh yeah absolutely um so um check me out on dreamcasthub.com obviously uh at dreamcasthub.com on twitter at spooky rusky on instagram but um also keep in mind uh and as far as japanese games i do have a section on my site for that uh dreamcasthub.com slash translations actually has patches for a ton of different uh, Japanese Dreamcast games that have been translated to English. So it's like 23 of them on there. If you haven't really looked into any of that, it's worth checking out. Where you can literally just download them, throw them on your GDMU. Also, as far as Japanese games, I did recently just post a video on Dreamcast Hub on YouTube of three Japanese Dreamcast games translated to English. And I also have uh, one of the people that translated one of the games. And Raccoon City Cinema is actually doing one of the reviews as well. So great being on as always. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been a pleasure to have you on. So definitely have to do it again. Absolutely. I'm down. Yeah. Uh, Lewis, tell us where people can find your good self. Uh, yep. Yeah. So just uh, on Twitter, really, at LewisJFC. Um, and then also obviously doing the, the Dreamcast Junkyard Twitter with Mike and um, 
Yeah, that's pretty much it. Look out for the translation of Nakaruru as well. That that's very exciting. Mm. Um, that'll be a lot long time yet, but uh, it'll come one day. Um, you can watch some uh, videos on Derek Pascarella's YouTube channel. Some sort of like proof of concepts that he's done of, so you can actually see a bit of our translation um, in action in the game. Um, so yeah, that's quite exciting. So check that out if you're intrigued. And yeah, that's me. Yeah, definitely go check that out. And I'll be excited to hear progress updates until we can finally get our hands on it. That's going to be very mm -hmm. exciting. Yep. Cool. Uh, Mike, where can people find you? Um, well, not online much because I've got no time. But uh, <laughs> I'm on Twitter uh, at space underscore turnip. Um, and yes, my uh, Dreamcast A to Z uh, guide is still on its way. Um, I am still just waiting for some indie games to release, and then it will be out, hopefully hopefully early next year now, I think, realistically. Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, and, of course, Dreamcast Picks, when you feel the need to... And Dreamcast your... Picks, yeah. So I am I am moving house within the next uh, 30 days, and I will be unloading, unpacking all my boxes of Dreamcast stuff, and so I will be restarting my at Dreamcast Picks um, Twitter account with lots of random Dreamcast stuff, uh, lots of new purchases that I've made in the last couple of months that I haven't put up there, including a Space Channel 5 Ulala la Figma figure, which arrived yesterday and which is now pride of place in my collection. Very cool. Excited to see that for sure. There we go. Um, you can find me at oddment84. Um, and of course, if you've listened to any of the uh, DCJY slash cross slash cross um, DCY episodes, you also know about Dreamcast Years, which is at Dreamcast Years. Um, and since we're giving updates, uh, Dreamcast Year 2, the book, it is still going. I've been a bit quiet on it just because I am like non-stop at the moment with all sorts of things, mostly my job because I work full time now, which I didn't do when I was making the first one. And I'm finding it very difficult to find time for other things. Um, so, but it's still coming. Things are still being worked on, but it is taking a lot longer than I thought. But don't worry, it's uh, it's still there and it's uh, I'm making time for it. There are plans in action. Um, I even had one of the interviews transcribed recently, which is very exciting, getting, getting ahead of it. So yeah, that's coming still. Um, you can also find me over at, uh, at Lost in Cult, where we are doing a Dreamcast issue for our third volume, which is going to be coming soon. I can't say much more at the moment, but that's it for me. And for us, I'm waving my arms as I say this, as if you can see me, kind of spreading them to show everybody here. As for us, uh, you can find us at the DC Junkyard on Twitter, and you can also find all our wonderful articles, including Tom's most recent article about petrol stations in Dreamcast yes. games, which was hilarious. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. Very good reading. Yeah. Those and are my favourite type of articles. Classic yes. Junkyard. Classic Junkyard. It's very Agreed. classic. Loved it. That's at uh, it's the dreamcastjunkyard.co.uk as usual. So please do go over there, have a peruse. There's so many great articles over there, many of them by Tom, including this classic. Uh, so do go read it. I had a good old laugh reading that over my coffee this weekend. Uh, it was it was great. Um, yeah, and that's us. Of course, we have our YouTube as well, where we do our occasional thing. Is that just uh, the Dreamcast Junkyard over on YouTube, I believe? Yeah, just search that and yeah. you'll find stuff there. Yeah, yeah. we've got the book club that's been done. We've got um, videos to do with the, uh, uh, the Desert Island Discs, which is still ongoing at the moment. We'll have more on that soon, hopefully. And uh, yeah, there's just a lot going on at the moment and preparations. We should probably start preparations for episode 100, really, shouldn't we? We're on 97. We've not got long left. Jeez. Oh. <laughs> should probably do something about that uh, but yeah, it's on its way um so yeah we've got a few more episodes before that so please do join us again for another exciting installment of the dream pod where we'll talk your ears off more about dreamcast very very soon until then thank you very much for joining us see you later bye bye please stop this disc now 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 now, now.